Hi, and welcome back, Attorney Steve Vondran. Welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. Okay, so we are talking in this video more about Strike 3 holdings, okay? So there are a lot of lawsuits being filed by this adult pornography company, and people are asking me, Attorney Steve, what's the setup? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand everything that's going on. So this video is out there. I have another excellent video on torrent litigation overview. You should watch that. It's about 20 minutes. But if you received a, sub a subpoena notice from your ISP or a copyright infringement notice or a notice of a lawsuit, these will be critical to helping you understand. So you don't have to call an attorney and you know talk for an hour really trying to figure all this out. So these are helpful videos, general legal information only. This is not legal advice, but people have asked me, what is the setup here? I don't understand what's going on. So without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so here we are up here. This is our whiteboard, and I've got down some of the players. This is from a recent lawsuit in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. District, Federal District Court, and a case came down basically denying, denying strike three holdings. This is our main plaintiff right here, okay? Denying strike three holdings the right to seek early discovery. This is what they like to do. They like to get the early discovery from your internet service provider. Here's our downloader here. You, some may call that the infringer. You got your infringer hooked up by the ISP logging into one of these websites of strike three holdings. The main, main ones being Blacked, Blacked Raw, Tushy, and Vixen. These are the main sites, okay? So, but this came down from a recent case where there were declarations from various parties, General Media Systems. General Media Systems is the parent company for Strike Three Holdings. This is where Lansky, he's the owner of the company, the, the chief creative officer. Um, he's the one that basically gave a declaration. Strike Three Holdings had an internal uh, party in the litigation department that gave a declaration. And a declaration is really nothing more than, um, you know, stating to certain facts that you have personal knowledge of, stating to those personal facts under oath, under penalty of perjury. So we had a declaration from them. We had a declaration from IPP International UG. This is a Germany-based company that does the BitTorrent surveillance. They're the ones catching, monitoring, detecting, finding the evidence of infringement. And here's some of the information that they're looking at. I'll go into those on another video if you're interested. Stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to this channel because you want to get this information, but I can't go over everything at once. So, But these are some of the main players in a litigation, what we call a John Doe um, Strike 3 lawsuit. This is where Strike 3 doesn't know who this person is. All they have is their IP address, and so they're trying to convince the court to let them serve a subpoena on the ISP. Okay, so that's what's going on, early motion work. Well, in this District uh, District of Columbia case, right up here, I'm gonna pull it down and go over a few of the uh, top points that I, that I really liked out of the uh, declaration of, I think this is the declaration of the owner of the company. So, um, but at any rate, you have, you have General Media who owns Strike3. Three. Strike3 three has their websites their membership sites, and apparently, from what I understand, they're one of the most popular, if not the most popular in the world. Uh, they claim, Strike3 claims to be the most pirated adult content site on the internet, so um, that's probably true. I mean, if you look at the number of lawsuits they're filing, they're filing hundreds, if not thousands of lawsuits. Let's check that box. I like to check the box when I go over something. They're filing hundreds, if not, um, getting into the thousands now in the lawsuits. I expect that 2019 is going to be another big year um, as they've been learning the processes, the system, dealing with the courts. Um, I think they're, I think this is just a prediction. I think you may see the BitTorrent litigation ramp up a little bit in 2019. We'll see. We have, we have Strike 3 Holdings. We have Malibu Media. Those are your two major filers in our in our federal court system okay um, so you have strike three holdings as I have some bullet points here for you they claim 20 million unique visitors per month that's quite a few now I didn't even know that I was like wow that's like a staggering figure but it was in their declaration which mean it was under oath 
and um, they claim to be the most pirated adult DVDs, um, or excuse me, the most pirated adult content online. They claim to be the number one seller of adult DVDs. Um, and this one also kind of took me by surprise. They claim 50,000 DMCA notices per month, 50,000. Now we've talked about DMCA notices in other videos. That's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That's basically when you see something online that's your, your creative content, your copyrighted um, products, you send a DMCA notice, they take it down. There's a dispute process if you want to dispute. So 50,000 a month, that's 600,000. I think that's six, is that 600,000? I'm not so good at math. I always have to use the uh, calculator on the big ones. That's a lot. They send a lot of DMCA notices per year. So yeah, I think that's 600,000. And they claim in their declarations that it only takes four minutes for one of their videos to go onto a torrent site. So in other words, um, as I understand it, don't quote me, they put out one video per week, I believe it is, and um, they say that it can take only four minutes to end up on the torrent sites. This is where everybody's down here in the swarm. It's not just one of these. There's a whole swarm of these people. They call it the swarm. You know, just over here, just, you know, thousands, hundreds or thousands of people downloading their videos. So that's what they claim. So the tools, the companies they use to help them accomplish these lawsuits and get that early discovery because they want that name. They want to know who this person is. They want to look them up. They want to do an asset search. They want to check them out on LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever it is that they're doing to find out their net worth, what are they worth, what, can, what kind of settlement can we get. Um, that's what they're trying to do here. But this court in D.C. that I'm about to read to you, uh, a piece of one of the declarations said, no, I'm not going to give you that early discovery. And the court looked at these different declarations um, and just felt that it wasn't sufficient. Okay, So IPP International UG, this is that German company, they had a declaration in there. I'm not going to go over it. Basically, we found infringement. Seven, Seven River Systems. Seven River Systems also had a declaration. They're a Maryland cybersecurity firm. They analyzed the IPP evidence. So did Strike 3. So Strike 3 also analyzes the evidence. If I put, if I put here, they analyze this evidence. And they probably analyze this evidence and this evidence. So they're looking at information obtained by these entities before they're bringing their action and, and their motion for early discovery. So um, they have Seven River Systems. They have MaxMind. This is the company or product. I'm not even quite sure. I'm going to have to look that up here in about two minutes. But that's how they track the IP to the location to the jurisdiction. So in other words, if you're downloading over here, you're in Los Angeles, or you're in San Francisco, or you're in New York City, it's this company that's helping them tie you into this jurisdiction so they know where to file the lawsuit. They are filing the lawsuits across the country. Okay, so, uh, but that's the basic setup of how these go. Um, here's a, just a few points, and, um, and I'm gonna get out of here. But a few points are, this was one of the declarations that was filed. It says, um, all defendants, it says, we are mindful of the nature of the litigation and our goal is not to embarrass anyone. We call these shame settlements because if your name gets put on the lawsuit, you know, you, it sort of compels you to settle because you don't want your name out there. It's embarrassing. Uh, but they say they're, our goal is not to embarrass or force anyone to settle unwittingly, especially anyone that is innocent. Well, many times we get a defendant who's a subscriber. The ISP identifies the subscriber, but it's not the person who did the downloading. That happens. Um, it says here, we are proud of the films we make. We do, want, we do not want anyone to be humiliated by them. All defendants pursued in Strike 3 litigation have distributed, at a minimum, distributed at least 15% of Strike Three's entire copyrighted library. So that's a lot. Um, we also do not seek settlements unless initiated by defendant or his counsel. It says here, nor will we pursue defendants that have proven hardships. 
and the litigation is not a business model. So those are some things. I'm going to let you think about those things. Um, we're happy to discuss those things. We do differ in our points of view on, on some of these points. Um, but, you know, that's something some people would, would beg to differ and disagree on. So at any rate, they're filing hundreds of lawsuits. The settlements can be large. How much? We've seen settlement demands up to $50,000. Mitigation, that's another question we have when they're sitting here monitoring, because oftentimes you'll see an infringement report and they'll be monitoring for a year, a year and a half. I mean, at some point, if you know something's wrong, why wouldn't you mitigate your damages? You know, there's an old maxim in the law that you can't recover damages that you could have easily mitigated against. So that's a, a real question to me in every case. Experience counts in this area of law. As you can see, this is a very different kind of law. Federal court experience is very, very important. Um, handling cases, we do deal with a lot of strike three cases, a lot of Malibu media cases. We also do other movies that are non-pornographic uh, movies, but experience in this field is ultra important. There's a lot of attorneys not in this area, like your business lawyer may not be the best person, your DOI lawyer, your family lawyer may not be able to do what we can do because experience counts. Uh, free consultation, you have it right there, is our phone number. And more information, you can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We're trying to bring you the information to help you understand the process. We've got a lot of videos online at attorneysteve.com. If you want to read more, more videos, podcasts, and things like that, we have covered torrent litigation pretty well, but we keep bringing you more and we keep bringing you the breaking news. So we hope you enjoy this. If you like, give us that thumbs up. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. No, you don't. It's like, oh, too much work to push that button. Go ahead and push that button. Go ahead and subscribe. I mean, how much politics can you listen to? Let, bring a little slice of the law into your life and just feel that joy, okay? Attorney Steve out. I got to run. Dinner's, dinner's on the table. Have a great day, and we'll talk again. Bye now.